70% of all breast cancers are hormone receptor positive breast cancer. So what does this mean? In this video, we'll discuss the role of hormones and how hormone therapy can help treat breast cancer that has the estrogen or progesterone receptors. Welcome to Cancer Treatment Updates, where treatment options for cancer are discussed openly and demystified. Women naturally produce hormones like estrogen and progesterone, which help with many functions, including reproductive health. But in some cases, these hormones can fuel the growth of breast cancer. Many breast cancer cells have tiny structures called hormone receptors that act like locks. When estrogen or progesterone attaches to these receptors, it can send signals that encourage cancer cells to grow. The goal of hormone therapy is to block or lower these hormones to slow down or stop the cancer. Now let's look at how doctors use hormone therapy to treat this type of breast cancer. One of the most common treatments is a group of medicines called SERMs, or selective estrogen receptor modulators. These medications block estrogen from attaching to cancer cells. Think of them as a shield preventing estrogen from reaching the cancer's locks. The most well-known SERM is tamoxifen. It works by sticking to estrogen receptors in breast cancer cells, blocking estrogen's ability to promote cell growth. Women before and after menopause can benefit from tamoxifen, both in the early stage or advanced breast cancer. Those at high risk of developing breast cancer uh, can also benefit from tamoxifen. Another class of therapies is aromatase inhibitors, such as anastrozole, letrozole, or exemestane, which basically lower the estrogen levels by blocking an enzyme called aromatase that converts other hormones into estrogens. Aromatase inhibitors are used in women with um, both early stage and advanced breast cancer after menopause. In younger women, premenopausal women, we can also use ovarian suppression to reduce the amount of estrogen. That can be done through medications like Soladex or Lupron, which temporarily shut down the ovaries. We can also do that by surgery, doing an ophorectomy or removing the ovaries, which is a permanent option for some patients. By lowering the estrogen levels, these methods make hormone therapies more effective. Another type of hormone therapy is called SERTs, or Selective Estrogen Receptor Degraders or Downregulators. The oldest one is called Fulvestrant or Fastlodex, which is given as a shot instead of a, of a pill, and that medication, again, eliminates the estrogen receptor to some degree. Newer SERTs are being produced that are given orally, uh, by pills instead of shots. One of them called Elacestrant is already approved uh, by the FDA. There are others in clinical trials and they seem to work best in patients with hormone receptor positive where there is a mutation in the estrogen receptor. One challenge with hormone therapy is that some breast cancers stop responding to treatment over time. It's what we call drug resistance. Scientists are working hard to find solutions. One approach is combining hormone therapy with other treatments, such as CDK4-6 inhibitors or um, targeted therapies. CDK4-6 inhibitors like palbocyclib, ribocyclib, or abemacyclib uh, can block the cell cycle and therefore make hormone therapy more effective. Targeted therapies blocking specific proteins like the PA3 kinase, AKT, mTOR can also improve the efficacy of hormone therapy. Immunotherapy has been tried and so far has not been the most successful in hormone receptor positive breast cancer, but there is a subset of these patients with highly proliferative tumors that may benefit and that's been investigated in clinical trials. These hormone therapies may have side effects like hot flashes, and it's recommended to try to stay cool, uh, avoid caffeine, practice relaxation techniques. Those things can help. There are medications that can also help with hot flashes. There may be arthralgias, myalgias, and uh, particularly with the aromatase inhibitors, uh, there can be a loss of bone density. Osteopenia or osteoporosis can happen, and it's recommended that women take calcium and vitamin D every day and also uh, do weight-bearing exercises uh, to improve the bone health. Even with the best treatments, early detection is still the most powerful tool in fighting breast cancer. So we still encourage women to do regular screening, mammograms, ultrasounds, women at high risk, 
or with dense breasts may uh, need additional tests like MRIs and um, it's important to detect uh, cancer as early as possible. All of this is making breast cancer a more manageable condition as opposed to a life-threatening disease. So most patients with breast cancer, if it's detected earlier, can be cured nowadays. And for those with more advanced disease, these treatments, particularly in the hormone receptor positive breast cancer, using hormone therapy by themselves or in combination with other therapies, can prolong life and improve symptoms and quality of life. Together we can turn the tide against breast cancer and create a future where better outcomes are possible for everyone affected. Mm -hmm.